Hey guys, I just needed to tell you a little something before you check out the video. So this is a little intro to the intro. So um, I decided that I talked and talked and talked for so long that I will have to film a separate video for my normal like knitting podcast content spinning things. So I just thought I'd tell you that A, this is just going to be really about Rhinebeck and B, um, I mostly talk about, and by mostly I should say, I only talked about spinning. Um, I talk about uh, buying my fleece uh, at Rhinebeck, and I talk about other spinning related things, but uh, I didn't buy any yarn, so I just wanted to let you know that so that you don't go like searching through my video for where's the yarn? I didn't buy any. Um, I kind of explain that and talk about why in the video. So um, I just wanted to give you a little heads up and let you know uh, what this video is about and let you know that it's a very heavy spinning video. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and this is my channel about knitting, spinning, sewing, all of the crafty things. You're joining me today in my home in Vermont, also known as the Green Mountain State. And uh, it is currently October here, and it is beautiful. The fall foliage is just gorgeous this year. Um, so today is a special video. Uh, yesterday, I drove to Rhinebeck. It was my first time going to Rhinebeck. My cat is playing with my knitting needles. Oh, my troublemaker is trying to get my attention clearly, playing with my knitting needles. Yeah, boy. Are you done now? Hey guys, <laughs> I had a little wardrobe change. It's just way too hot to wear my sweater. So uh, the sweater that I'm wearing at the beginning of the video is my Rhinebeck sweater. This is the So Faded pattern by um, Andrea Mowry. And um, I didn't, do, I didn't knit the garter sleeves, um, the cap sleeve, and I just decided to do plain stockinette. Um, probably because I have, I already have really large shoulders, and I didn't want to like call extra attention to this area. <laughs> I already have like linebacker shoulders. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so this is my sweater. I finished it. I, well, I was working really hard on it Friday night, and I finished it um, Saturday morning, like really, really early Saturday morning. I stayed up all night working on it, thinking that I could finish it and go Saturday, um, but I stayed up way too late. I stayed up um, basically until I should have been waking up at that time, and so I decided that um, instead of driving to Rhinebeck, completely sleep deprived that I would just go Sunday. So I was I was at Rhinebeck yesterday, uh, October the 22nd, and um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was my first time going, and like I said, I wore my um, so faded sweater. It was my Rhinebeck sweater, my first time, my first Rhinebeck sweater. This is... Um, the yarn is all by Peggy Jane Fibers, and Peggy Jane uh, Fibers is a little indie, it's an Etsy store, um, the owner's name is Kelly, and she also lives in Vermont, um, and yeah, this is all her yarn. So the, the first color was a custom, well, not a custom, it was um, exclusive to the, there's a store um, in Shelburne, Vermont, called Must Love Yarn, and I bought that in the spring. Um, it's long gone now, but um, I thought it went really well with one of the colors that she sells regularly um, on her Etsy shop, which is Potent Petals. And there's a slight difference between this one and this one, if you can tell. This one has a little bit more orange, and this one has a little bit more of this kind of raspberry color. And then the last color is a special, um, it's a custom color that I had, I asked Kelly to make. So um, I told her that I wanted the Potent Petals color, 
but just with some more purple. And so she did a custom dye for me, and that's what she came up with. So this is my, um, my finished sweater. And I wore it yesterday. It was so hot yesterday. It was in the 70s. Um, and I was sweating like a pig. Like I sweat, I sweat off all of my makeup. Sorry if that's gross, but it's fact of life. It was really hot and I was wearing a sweater. <laughs> oh gosh. But so, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy I wore it, you know, cause it's the thing to do, but I think next time, yeah, I would just maybe wear like a t-shirt or something underneath it and then put it on for a little bit and then take it off or something. Um, you know, hopefully next year, if I get to go again next year, hopefully it will be colder. It'd be nice, you know, it'd be nice if it was cold enough to wear like hat and mittens and, and, you know, just be able to wear all of the things. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, so I changed my outfit. This is, I bought, so, okay, like I bought this pretty late in the day. Um, I'm just going to put my sweater off to the side. So I bought this pretty late in the day, and they were nearly sold out of all of the t-shirts. They were sold out of, um, like, regular length t-shirts. They had these long sleeve ones, which are so long. Um, and all they had, they only had two sizes left, and so um, I got the extra large, which was the, I guess, the closest thing to what I would want. Um, <laughs> but it's still massive, and I'll just stand up and show you. That it's not a, it's not a shirt, it's a dress. Like, I can't even. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, like a night shirt. <laughs> oh, or I could probably just wear this with leggings. I mean, I mean, maybe. <laughs> um, I have the, uh, sorry, I have the dogs inside today. Hi, Thea. Hi, Thea. Yeah, I thought I'd just let them hang out. I normally put them outside. Go lay down. Go lay down, honey. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is um, one of the 2017 shirts. And I think it's really cute. I think gray is not always my color. Sometimes it washes me out. But I think it looks nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad I got to um, snag one. And I love, doesn't it, is it like, I just realized the mountains are kind of like yarn balls. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, so I thought um, I will have uh, different sections of the video laid out for you. So if you want to skip ahead and look at, you know, my Rhinebeck acquisitions, or if you want to see what I'm knitting on, um, what I've spun, uh, things like that, I will have all of the um, times linked for you. But the first thing I thought I would do is talk a little bit about myself and just tell you um, a little bit about my crafty life, I guess. So, my name is Stephanie, and like I said, I live in Vermont, um, and I'm a knitter, um, and I'm also a crocheter, and I started out crocheting first. Um, my mom crochets, uh, and her grandmother crocheted, and my great-grandmother, um, on my dad's side crochets. I think most of the women in my family crochet, um, at least the older generations. I'm kind of keeping it alive. But um, this actually was a baby blanket that my great-grandmother crocheted for me. And I think I was probably a year old when she gave it to me. So this, I'm not going to say how old this sweater is. By the way, I think I'll, I'll tell you, I don't want to, uh, for my own, I know you guys understand, for my own privacy and protection. I don't want to give out too many details about my private personal life, but um, I get, I, I, people think that I'm younger than I am. Um, so I'll just say that I'm in my late 20s um, and that I'm closer to 30 than I am close closer to 20. <laughs> just in case, because I have people still think that I look like I'm 19. Um, I'm not, no. No, I don't want to go back there either. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, um, so a little bit about me. Um, I, so, like I said, I knit and crochet, and more recently, I've been getting into spinning. So, making my own yarn um, has become 
I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's taking over my life. I love it so much. It's so much fun. Uh, <laughs> And um, so more recently, I've become a spinner, uh, but I've also done other things. Like, I love sewing clothes. I love making my own clothes. And I have a few videos of um, some things that I've made, especially last year. Um, when I started this channel, I was making videos about sewing and the clothes that I was making and um, to share with, with other makers, because um, this is a great way for me to connect with people that I don't you know, have, I don't have access to people like me and my real life, but there, there's plenty of us out there. They're just, I don't know, it's easy to connect with you guys on the internet. Um, whereas in my personal life, there, there are really no, there's really no one that does the things that I do. Um, and I, you know, have someone to talk about that enjoys and understands the sort of um, crazy addiction <laughs> that uh, crafting is but so anyways I have some older videos from last year uh, with a bunch of things that uh, clothes that I sewed for myself so if you're interested you can go check those out um, <laughs> and I've been trying to get back into sewing but I have, so, I have a lot of different things going on so <laughs> um, I have yeah I do have some plans to make a Kelly Anorak jacket that hopefully I'll get the ball rolling on soon <laughs> and um, I recently made a brand new pattern came out called the Valletta top and I just recently filmed a short video for that um, it's a beautiful bohemian style blouse and um, oh also I quilt so this is a quilt that I made this is uh, the jelly roll race quilt if you've ever seen um, Missouri Star Quilting Company, um, I think when I started quilting, I watched tons of their videos, and I really learned a lot from Jenny. I know I'm not the only one. Um, so something that's quick and easy to make and a lot of fun is the Jelly Roll Race Quilt. And so that's what this quilt is behind me. Um, it was my first quilt, and it's... Uh, the, you can see the stitching on top of it. That's all done free motion quilting that I did myself. So I think it's pretty good for my first quilt. Uh, I've made others since then. That was just the first one that I made. And I haven't done any quilting in a while. And if you look in my past videos in the background, I have a double wedding ring quilt, which is to me the most precious. I made it for my wedding. Um, and it's the most precious, beautiful thing. Uh, at least in the quilting <laughs> department uh, that I've ever made. So, so yeah, this is a, this is a Stephen West pattern, and that's my own hand spun yarn. So this is the Holy Chevrons pattern that I spun, and that was spun with um, Edgewood Garden Studios fiber and two braids, and then it's a three ply traditional three ply that I spun and then uh, knit into the shawl. So yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit. There's other things that I do, but I think those are the major things. Those are the major crafts that um, that I do. Um, I like painting. I, li I mean, I like all of the crafty things. You know, there's um, the saying, jack of all trades. Well, I think I'm the Jane of all crafts. <laughs> I'm the master of none. <laughs> but I love, I love all, all of them. <laughs> so... So yeah, that was uh, that was just a little intro, so you can get to know me and what I like to do, and yeah. So um, I'm gonna get on to Rhinebeck and everything that happened and my experience. So um, I went Sunday and I left. I drove from my house. It was a three-hour drive for me, um, which was it wasn't horrible, but it certainly wasn't a fun drive, and. Um, you know, I was really sad. My husband and I, we do everything together. He's my best friend. And, <laughs> get sappy. Um, <laughs> and uh, he couldn't go with me. I wasn't kidding. I, I get, like, emotional really easily. <laughs> um, he couldn't go with me, so I had to go by myself. And it was just hard, you know. It's just nice to have him there. Especially because he drives, he drives me, you know, many places. And I get to sit and knit. So I couldn't, I couldn't knit on the way to Rhinebeck. I had to drive. 
<laughs> so yeah, I got there. I left at 7 a.m. and I got there at 10. So I wasn't there for like the grand opening. Um, uh, but it was great because when I got there, there was no line. You know, there was a few people coming in, but there wasn't a huge wait, um, which was great. And I just bought my ticket and um, headed in. It was it was uh, no wait. And the first thing that I did was go check out the fleece barn or the not the barn, just the the fleeces for sale. So that's the first thing I did. I'd never been before, so I was like looking at the map, trying to figure out where the fleeces were and and um, how to get there. And then so I made like a beeline straight for that building. I think it was, there was like A, B, C, D, like all in a row, there's a bunch of buildings, and it was like one of the middle ones, I can't, without looking at the, um, the uh, little pamphlet, I can show you actually on here, looks like it was B, right there, and so I went and found that first, and and I hadn't even like, you know, I just drove three hours. I didn't even stop to find the ladies' room. <laughs> it was like, find the wool. And then I was like, okay, now I can go find the ladies' room and then buy my fleece because <laughs> because I didn't want to have to like deal with carting that around. But the uh, but buying a fleece was a priority for me. I had thought about you know, there's there's so much there. If you don't kind of go in with a game plan, I think you'll end up just buying, you know, everything. <laughs> so I, I did go in with a sort of a game plan. Not not anything strict like, you know, oh, you, you have this amount that you can't go over or, you know, you can't buy more than, you know, this, this or that. I just kind of thought about what I really wanted and just made that my priority. So... Um, I knew that I wanted to possibly buy a fleece, um, definitely wanted to buy a fleece, and I knew that I wanted to check out Into the World. Um, they had some bats that I didn't get because they were sold out, but um, I wanted to check out Into the World uh, for their spinning fiber, and I wanted to check out Loop, Loop Fiber Studio, um, and so I did both of those things, and yeah. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about it before I actually show you this, the things that I got. But um, so other than that, I, I didn't make a lot of purchases. I have a few other little things that I got that I'll show. Um, but I'll, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if you came here to see all of the yarn that I bought, I didn't buy any yarn. None. This is how much yarn I bought. <laughs> I didn't buy any yarn. I only bought um, fiber and yeah, spinning related things. So um, yeah, maybe you you just want to see yarn and um, that's okay. You'll have to go see somebody else's video. And I think that's just because I recently started my own Etsy store and I'm starting to, you know, want to knit with, with what I'm dying and to be able to um, play with my own hand dyed yarn. Um, so I think between, yeah, I went to a spa strico, um, recently and I have a whole separate video for that where I got some, um, I did buy some yarn from them. Um, and if you want, I'm not going to talk about it cause I have a whole separate video on it, but I went to a spa strico recently and I got some yarn. So I really, it's not like I just bought yarn. It's not like I need more. It's not like I don't already have stash. Because I do, so <laughs> so yeah. I didn't buy any yarn at Ryback, and um, sorry if that's what you came for, but I don't have any <laughs> to show. So yeah, other than that, um, I I went to find Wing and a Prayer Farm. She uh, so Tammy is the owner of Wing and a Prayer Farm, and she was at Ryback with Mary and Bluma, her Cormo sheep. I'm sorry, my cat just knocked my cord off. He's really being a troublemaker today. So I went to see Tammy. She was really busy. I didn't get to talk to her. I did get to see Mary and Bluma, and I got to, um, I think I pet Mary, I think. Uh, and and I said hi to her daughter, who was there helping show the, do uh, show the, show the sheep off. Gosh. Um, and, oh, I ran into a couple people. So when I was... Um, 
and in the string of buildings, I don't remember which one it was, probably A or B, um, I ran into uh, this lady who makes spinning videos. Her name's Lois, and I'm going to have the link to one of her videos below because I think you should go watch it. Even if you're not into spinning, you should go check out her video. Um, I'm going to put the link for um, how, spin wool, card wool like a ghost. And just go check out her intro because she's so she's so cute and hilarious i love she has these long braids <laughs> i just love her she's she's so awesome um i'm gonna have that linked below so definitely go check her out i ran into her and we chatted for a little bit um i'd love to meet her again and to have the chance to really sit down and chat with her and learn from her because she has years and years and years and years of experience and we were talking a little bit about you know I didn't have very long to chat with her and I didn't want to keep her but we did chat for a little bit and she told me I think that the first fleece she bought was the same kind that I bought and I'll show it later um, and she we were talking a little bit about about like being careful washing fine wool because it can felt and you don't want that to happen so um, she was telling me that she, she puts wool in her washing machine and her dryer. Now she doesn't wash it in the washing machine, but she like uses the spin cycle to kind of get all the water out. And then, um, she puts it in her dryer and I was thinking like, huh, I don't know if I'm that brave. <laughs> oh my goodness. But she was awesome to me and I really hope that maybe one day, um, I can meet her again and it would be so nice to chat and kind of um, pick her brain and learn some of um, I know she has just tons of knowledge about spinning and fiber and wool and just just everything there is to know about spinning um, because she has years of experience so I'd love to meet her again and I don't know maybe I can try to like get in contact with her or something so I also met um, Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast. Uh, she was super sweet. Um, I just kind of ran into her and it was one of those moments where it was like, is that, is that? <laughs> and I just tapped her on the shoulder and I was like, are you? <laughs> and she's like, yes. Before I even said anything, she was like, yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so I chatted with her just for, a, you know, a couple seconds. She complimented my sweater, which was really sweet of her. Um, she's, by the way, she's wearing like adorable little skirts that she, she sewed, which was cute. I think, I think she was wearing one with yarn balls on it. Like, I think there are photos of her wearing one with squirrels. I could be wrong, but I, I swear I think I saw her wear with a skirt with yarn balls on them. And it's like a skirt that she made, which is really cute. So anyways, we just chatted for a couple seconds. It was, there was a lot going on. There was tons of people walking around us and by us. And, um, so she, and she was with people, um, you know, of course she doesn't want to sit there and, and, uh, spend 10 minutes talking to me. But so we just chatted for a second. Um, and I took a photo with her. Um, I'm, I'm going to insert it here, but it is really Oh, I don't, really don't think it's a very flattering photo, but I'll show it of me. She looks beautiful. I just felt like it wasn't super flattering of me, but <laughs> but it was sweet of her to take a photo with me, and I'm glad I have it. Um, I, I also have a photo of, uh, of Lois and myself, um, which I'll also insert. It was just too hot, guys. It was just too hot. Like, all my makeup was running off. Ugh, it was just, yeah. So, yeah, other than that, okay, so I also, I ate at, and I'm going to be inserting photos here, there, and everywhere, wherever, they, wherever they're appropriate. But I also thought I'd talk a little bit about what I ate. Um, I really, I kind of did want to go to the falafel line. I think everybody talks about the falafels. And, and uh, it certainly looked really good. Yeah, that line was the longest line for food out of all of the food vendors. That line was so long. And uh, But I did, I did stand and wait in a line. I went to, um, I don't know the name. I have photos of it. But I stood in line for the lamb sandwich, 
So there was one uh, vendor there that had lamb, like shaved lamb sandwiches, and that's what I stood in line for, and I did some knitting. I worked on my speckle and pop while I was waiting in line, and um, yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I think next time I'll definitely um, go for the for the falafel line. Um, but I enjoyed the sandwich. It was delicious. Uh, so yeah, I'll insert photos of my speckle and papa. I was like working on while I was waiting in line. And then I also went to, um, I also went to the, uh, cider donut stand. So there was, um, apple cider and apple cider donuts. And those donuts, guys, I know everybody online is raving about those donuts right now, and that's for a good reason. Those are the most amazing, delicious <laughs> apple cider donuts I've ever had in my entire life. And I've had some good apple cider donuts. Like, I live in Vermont where apple cider donuts are kind of a thing. Like, you know, you can get apple cider donuts all over Vermont. I think one of my favorite places to get apple cider donuts here in Vermont is in Waterbury. There is a cold, I think it's cold hollow cider, it's like a mill, it's, it's cold, hollow, cold hollow cider. It's in Waterbury, Vermont. Um, they have a lovely kind of touristy store, but they, you can sample apple cider. You can um, sample lots of different products and things. Um, they have like jams and jellies and mustards and the whole nine. You can see a little bit of their like machinery and how they make the cider. Um, and you can also get cider donuts. And those are really delicious, um, but it's a different kind of, they're slightly different. The ones at Rhinebeck were covered in uh, cinnamon and sugar. And man, if I didn't know any better, you'd think they'd put something in there. <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and I had a little bit of cider too. I got like a little cup of ap uh, cold apple cider. So that was pretty good. But no, their apple cider was good. But my favorite apple cider is cold hollow cider um, in Waterbury, Vermont. That's my favorite cider. So I think that's about it. You know, I walked around everywhere. Um, yeah, those are the only two people that I met. Um, and... Somebody, I didn't have anybody recognize me. I had a couple people I noticed were staring at me, and I don't know if if anybody recognized me at all because I'm I'm really so small. Um, you know, not a lot of people know about me, so I knew that there was a chance that no one would would recognize me or say hi. But I did have somebody. Some couple people were staring, and I don't know if it was because they were staring at my sweater uh, or if they recognized me. So. If you saw me and recognized me, you should have said hi. I'm really nice. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, I did have somebody like yell at me while I was walking by. They were like, like your sweater. <laughs> and and um, I just was like, kind of like, my CPU was kind of working a little slowly. And so I was just like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't immediately respond. Uh, this, it was a girl, she was wearing, um, a hot pink sweater. It looks like she knit. Um, and I wish I had like, you know, I was having like, um, I don't know if I was shocked that somebody like, <laughs> you, you kind of yelled at me about my sweater, but <laughs> in a good way. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get a chance to say anything to back to her plus we were kind of moving in opposite directions so so if you're watching this hi and your your sweater was beautiful I love hot pink I love pink obviously <laughs> but um, yeah if you're watching this hi I'm sorry I didn't say that your sweater is beautiful too because it was oh gosh so yeah other than that yeah so I walked around I looked at the sheep I have some little videos of the sheep um, and different things and I think what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did last time and, and insert videos at the end so there'll be different videos of uh, things that I saw um, videos of the sheep um, there's a judging some judging that I saw I think of Coriadale 
And um, yeah, I'm gonna have all of those at the end. Um, some of them, I'm gonna warn you, some of them might be um, not be the best quality video because I kind of stole them from Instagram. Um, so <laughs> just warning, but I think, you know, you'd rather, you'd probably rather see, see it even if it's not perfect than not see it at all. I mean, I, I have no problem watching watching that. So yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and talk about my acquisitions. So I think I'll save the fleece for last <laughs> and I'll talk about, yeah, the things that I got. So one of the things, not very exciting, <laughs> but I wanted to try out was this um, unicorn fi fiber power scour. And it says extreme clean detergent. Uh, this is good for, well, multiple things, but it says dirt doesn't have a chance. Uh, so, sorry, I'm just noticing, contains no bleach additives, phosphates, fillers, enzymes. Anyways, um, you can use this for cleaning fleece, um, so your fiber. And I did actually try this out last night, and it worked really well. So I'll show you the little bit of fiber that I cleaned when I talk about my fleece. And I'll show you how clean it looks. And um, later I'm going to do a little test to see if my, I have some Euclid, to see if my Euclid will do, will clean it just as well. Or if this is, um, you know, better. So yeah, that's my Unicorn Fiber Power Scour. And I, I'll tell you, I really, what I like about this bottle is that you just pull up on the cap and then you can squirt out from the from the top. You don't have to unscrew it. And then you just push it back down to lock it. And then, so that makes it that's nice so that you can just pour just a teeny bit um, instead of having to unscrew the top and, and pour it out that way. So I got a little bit of that. And then um, I also got a little bit of soak. So there was a little stand for soak. And um, I've just never tried any. So I got the fig um, scent. And it smells really, really good. Um, I got the fig because personally I get a little um, really strong smells are a little bit overpowering for me and they um, mess with my uh, like my allergies tend to uh, flare up if I have something really strong um, and sometimes really strong smells can give me a headache so they, they're advertising this um, pineapple scent be a pineapple uh, pineapple grove <laughs> and uh, I smelled it but it's just too strong for me it's just um, I can't I can't handle things that are that strong smelling but this fig's nice. It has a nice, um, it's, it's scented without being overwhelming. So I enjoyed that. And I look forward to using that and um, use it to wash some of my hand knit, to wash my, um, my sweater. <laughs> I haven't washed it yet. So that was my, that was another little purchase that I got. And then I went to Into the World and I really, really wanted one of their bats. Um, I, I have a subscription to Into the World. Uh, they have a monthly fiber club where you kind of get surprised with, um, with a selection of fiber. So the fiber is a surprise and the, the color is a surprise. So I get that every month. Um, I, you know, I'm probably going to cancel the subscription sooner or later, <laughs> but um, I haven't gotten, and I haven't gotten mine in yet. They're behind because of Rhinebeck. They didn't ship out normally. When they normally um, do so my October shipment is behind but um, anyways I wanted one of their bats and unfortunately I think they sold out on Saturday and uh, so that's the downside to not going Saturdays sometimes they sell a lot of things but they had um, this random assortment odds and ends bag I haven't even opened this up yet which is surprising because normally I have no patience for that kind of thing and I need to open it up and play with it. So what's cool about this is not only are you getting different colors and, and you get kind of see like 
different colorways, but there are different kinds of fiber in here too. Um, like the, right there, you can see. Now, I don't know what kind of fiber um, these are. It doesn't tell you. There's no information other than, okay, it says, in addition to assorted wool breeds, the contents may include alpaca, yak, camel, superwash fibers, bamboo, silk, nylon, and cashmere. So there's no, there's no telling exactly what I have in here. Um, it's sort of a surprise. So these are all just little mini, I don't know what to call them, bumps. Just stick to odds and ends. Ooh, that's, that feels like, um, mm, maybe Romney, a little bit, a little bit scratchier. Some of these feel silky. I haven't even opened these up. Ooh, there's a pretty fall colored one. I don't know if I need to show you all of them. Now I kind of feel like I do. I think I looked at this color online. Got Phoenix color. There's only a couple more. I like this one. I think, yeah, this is the, this is the one that I bought from them. This is the same thing as this. Scissors, scissors, lizard, Spock. That's a Big Bang Theory reference. So that's what that looks like spun up. They could be different fibers. Um, it's just the same colorway, but they could be different fibers. Mine ha was, um, oh boy, I don't even remember. Maybe, it definitely had silk in it. It was maybe merino and silk. Something in silk. But yeah, that's something I spun up a while ago. So yeah, it's my little random assortment bag. I'll put all of these back before they get lost. Some of these definitely feel really silky. So that's fun. You know, I'm probably going to spin these up together and have sort of a random, I don't know, stripes of color. And then figure out what to do with it. But it's just something fun to play with, you know? I enjoy that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys do, but I like just playing with things and seeing what I can come up with. And, you know, maybe you don't have an exact idea of what you're going to do with it, but that's half of the fun. So, yeah, that's my, that's my only Into the World. It's the only thing I bought from them. Uh, so the next thing that I got was a loop bump. <gasps> so I have video of the, the, the little, their little setup. And I'm going to insert that video now. So their, their stand was gorgeous. Just, oh my gosh, jaw dropping. Like all of the, all of the loop bumps were all beautifully displayed. And I'll tell you, I remember what it's called. It was called a uh, lickety split. So when I first got there, one of the, the first bumps that I picked up, I didn't buy it, uh, was called lickety split. And I'm sure she's probably on vacation. She has an Etsy store and it's probably on vacation because of Rhinebeck. But um, if you go check out her Etsy store, um, if it didn't sell, it might be, she might be selling it on Etsy. So um, that was the one that like, I don't know why, it just drew my attention. And uh, the colors were really fun and bright and kind of all over the place. There wasn't really a uh, rhyme or reason to the colors. You know, there wasn't really a color scheme. It was just like random pops of fun colors. And I was like really drawn to that one. Um, I thought about getting it, but I don't know. My, the rational part of my brain was like, what are you going to do with that? You know, plus I already have this, which is going to be kind of like that crazy random color. So, um, although I bought this after I bought the my, after I went to Loop, I went um, to Loop Fiber Studio first, but um, I thought, you know, maybe you should get something a little more subtle. <laughs> uh, I love color, okay? I love bright color. I'm not going to apologize for it either. I love all the bright, happy colors. I don't care what time of year it is. 
I love bright, happy colors, and I'm going to wear them. <laughs> you don't have to like it. It's what I like. So anyways, I thought I would be a little bit more rational and get um, something a little more subtle, but still fun and beautiful. Beautiful. So this is um, called Passion Play. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and it has Marina, Alpaca, Angelina, Bamboo, and Silk. And it's 5.9 ounces. So uh, there are different sizes of bumps that she sells. Uh, of course, the more fiber you have, the more it's going to cost. This is her little card. Oh, and her name is also Stephanie. I suppose she prefers Steph. I do not prefer Steph. I prefer Stephanie. Um, fun fact. People just call you Steph without asking, but I actually prefer Stephanie. Um, so this is my bum. A little bit of uh, Stelina popping out right there, or Angelina. Yeah. yeah. So this has, uh, I don't know, magenta, red. There's kind of browns in there. This not the middle part here, but this outer section reminds me of my own colorway called Hidden Huntress. So that um, has a very fall autumnal kind of feel. And then it has this fun, bright, magenta, almost mauve uh, section. I really, really love this. And so I was thinking this might make um, a beautiful shawl and something that has color and is beautiful without being like in your face color like this one <laughs> um but uh yeah i was thinking actually it might make another beautiful shawl like this this again this is the holy chevrons by stephen west and this is such a fun knit i really is enjoyable easy um beautiful worked up really quickly and it was so nice that i might knit another one but you know there's so many patterns out there i do want to knit other patterns too, but um, I recommend that pattern. I loved it. I think it was a great, uh, easy pattern, um, kind of a, a easy on-the-go knitting. Most of it's garter, so yeah, go check that pattern out if you don't, if you haven't already. So yeah, I think I might um, spin this into, um, you know, something for a shawl. So, I don't know, I've been, you know, it seems like all I want to do is spend fingering weight uh, yarn, but <laughs> that's kind of what I want to spin again. I don't know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so that was, that was all I got from her booth. Um, she was super nice to me, and I was like... Hi, your name's Stephanie, isn't it? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, my name's Stephanie. <laughs> no, it's because I'm a dork. <laughs> ah, I love their bags, by the way. And she always matches the, um, the high thea. You gotta lay down, honey. She hears the bag rattling and she probably thinks it's food. Um, I love how she matches the little drawstring. And the color of this, this is like a little rain jacket pull thing. I don't know what the exact name of this is. Um, but she always matches the color to go with the color of the bump. Or at least one of the colors in there. So I think that's all that I have. Yeah, that's, that's all that I bought besides my fleece. So I was really good, y'all. Like, really good. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you my fleece now. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I really, I really just want to cuddle with it. Oh, it smells so good. You guys, oh. <laughs> All right, you don't have to get my personal brand of crazy, okay? You don't have to understand it. That's okay. It's my kind of crazy. You got your own kind of crazy. 
I'm 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 in such a mood. This just like makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, so yes, the fiber. I want why I want to call it a barn. The uh, sale, the fiber sale. Um, had they had these little stickers on all of the fleeces. So it was really cool. I took a little bit of video, but I think I accidentally held the camera the wrong way, so I might not be able to use it. Um, but I have some photos and things to insert. So the, the fiber uh, sale was really nicely laid out. They had long tables, and they had signs for um, alpaca, mohair, um, long wool, primitive breeds, um, fine wool, uh, uh, I think that's it. There might be one more I'm forgetting. Um, yeah, I think I got them all. Um, so, so yes, I spent a ton of time looking at the fleeces. I spent, I don't know, I probably spent close to an hour, uh, just looking at fleeces and agonizing over which one I was going to buy because... Oh, there were so many beautiful fleeces, and wow, sticker shock. My gosh. You know, it's my first time going, so I didn't know what to expect. And I've only bought one other fleece, so I'm still learning everything. And uh, so I was, I was kind of like sticker shocked at some of the prices of these. There was a small bag. It was one of the, the winners for the mohair uh, section, and wow, it was like, almost three hundred dollars I can't remember I have it I have it in the video uh, for this small bag of mohair I was like whoa um, and some of the the, wool, the uh, sheep's wool was just as expensive um, I was uh, I was thinking that I wanted a fine wool but I was open-minded about it um, I still want to try you know I want to try all of the wools I'll just take one of everything <laughs> but, but, um, I, I kind of had fine wool in mind and I had, um, you know, I kind of want to make some more sweaters, uh, and I want to make a sweater from sheep to sweater, you know, from fleece to sweater. So, um, I was thinking a fine soft wool would be a good idea. And, uh, so yeah, I spent tons of time looking at all of the different fleeces. Um, there was some gorgeous Shetland there, and I had a chance to see what really nice Shetland feels like. Um, because I have some that I bought from a, uh, from a yarn store that, that was selling some local Vermont, um, Shetland, and it was a little bit more rustic. It's considered a primitive breed, and it's interesting, um, I'll show you. I'm sorry, this is a super heavy spinning video. This is a super heavy uh, fiber wool making your own yarn video. And um, that's just what I'm into. And this uh, this podcast is a reflection of me. So <laughs> that's what you're in for if you're watching this. Um, in the Fleece and Fiber source book, there's a lot of information on Shetland. There's a big section on Shetland and I'll just show you quickly okay so Shetland has um, there's a bunch of pages on Shetland in this book and that's because there's such a variety of uh, colors and, and and varieties within of the wool itself so um, I'm still learning all of these things I'm still I don't know. I could maybe say an advanced spinner. No, excuse me. Advanced beginner spinner. That's what I meant to say. No. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm an advanced beginner is what I would say. Um, there's still so much I don't know. There's still so much I have to learn. Um, there's still so much that I that I'm still trying to perfect, and I'm, I'm far from being an, a great spinner. Far. <laughs> but there's a, a lot of information on the fleece and fiber source book about Shetland and I did check them out but um, Tammy from Wing and a Prayer has Shetlands and so I was thinking you know if I'm gonna get a Shetland fleece I might just get one directly from Tammy the uh, owner of Wing and a Prayer farm 
but yeah. Anyway, so I just thought I'd show you that real quick. Um, so I was torn between the Cormo and the Coriadale. <laughs> and um, I saw that Andre Sue, Andre Sue Knits, right? She bought a, uh, I saw it on Instagram, she bought a Cormo fleece and um, a mohair fleece. Um, so I was looking at the Cormo and I have some videos that I'll be inserting of the Cormo that were beautiful, so beautiful. Like I'm really just in awe of how amazingly clean these fleeces are and, and white. One of those Cormo fleeces was stunning, stunning. Like the sable length was this long. The wool is so, so fine and it was white, brilliant white, like whiter than this. This looks dirty and dingy. Um, that color white would look dirty compared to the white of this fleece. It was amazing. It was also lots of money. <laughs> but, um, so I decided to get, uh, the Cormo and, um, one of the things about, oh, excuse me, Coriadale, I can't even, I'm just too, I just need, I gotta calm down. Um, I, um, I ended up getting the Coriadale, uh, even though I liked the Cormo, the Cormo has tons and tons of lanolin. So when you feel it, it feels greasy. And, uh, and it's harder to get clean. It's harder to get all of that grease out. You have to wash it in hot water or soak it in hot water. Um, and, um, the lady that I was talking to, they had really helpful ladies, uh, walking around helping you choose a fleece and telling you a little bit about them and, um, different things. So, one of the ladies was super sweet and she was coming over and checking on me probably because I was there for so long <laughs> and um she was telling me that about like if I got the Cormo I probably have a harder time getting all the lanolin out and that um some people mix boiling water with their tap water so not just running your tap water getting your tap water really hot and letting that run which is just what that's all I've done um for cleaning my, uh, the fin fleece that I got from Vermont Sheep and Wool. She was saying that you can add a little bit of boiling water to that to get it really hot. Um, not boiling, but, you know, because it would cool down a little bit, but to be able to get that lanolin off, um, you have to use really, really hot water. And so I was thinking, hmm, maybe that's a little bit more work than I want. And the wool was really fine, so you have to be more careful with it. So I was taking all of that into consideration and the price too. You know, um, this is only my second fleece. I don't need the like best in show <laughs> fleece. <laughs> so I got the Cor uh, Coriadale and I thought I'd show you the tag here. So this is the uh, scorecard. Now this farm, I have the... Uh, I have a little bit of um, wool that I washed in the bag with the their business card. This is the I always hold everything upside down. This is um, the farm that my fleece came from. This is from Donna Abarezi. I always want to want to add the <laughs> Abarezi, <laughs> um, and she's from. Altamont, New York. I don't know a lot about different areas of Vermont, so I'm probably butchering that, but that's her business card. Look how adorable these little sheep are. They're so fluffy. Um, so yeah, about the scorecard. So all of them had these scorecards, and it has uniformity, density, handle, crimp, length, and weight. So this one scored... Um, all fours and fives. It the only thing it didn't get a five on was the uniformity, so of grade and density throughout. It got a four, which is still really good, and the crimp. 
define crimp to the grade. It got a four. But length, weight, handle, and density were all fives. And it, to me, with the, with the limited experience that I have, this is just so amazing. And they had, right next to it, there was another fleece, the same uh, breeder. And um, it was a, a 10 pound bag. This is a six pound bag. It's over six pounds. I think it's 6.8 pounds. Um, they had a 10 pound bag for $200. Um, and there was a significant price jump from my fleece, which was six, you know, six point, uh, or six pounds, eight ounces. The price jump was major. Um, I only paid $80 for this. And, um, if you buy wool, that's you, then you'll know that that's not a lot. Um, that's not a very expensive fleece. I think I got an incredible deal. Um, especially when you consider everything that I can make with this. Once, um, you know, six pounds of wool, it's going to lose some weight when I clean it and wash it and everything, but scour it. But, um, but there's still a ton of wool here. You know, I can probably get a couple sweaters and then some, you know, other things out of it. So, you know, who knows? I, there's so much potential in this giant bag. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the one right next to it was uh, the third place winner. Um, I don't know if it was for, I don't know if they judge Jess Coriadale. I'm not sure exactly how the judging works. Um, I'd love to find out more. But um, right next to it, yeah, was the third place. And it was $200 for the 10 pounds. And this was, you know, s s over 6 pounds, and it was just $80. Um, so I feel like this was a great deal for the amount of wool that I've got. And I already, I kind of flashed this real quick. I washed a little bit of it last night. And I was in shock of just how clean, if I can find a piece. So here's a little bit, it's not the great, greatest looking piece. They all come in these bags, um, basically trash bags. Um, so here's a nice piece. This is unwashed, and here it is washed. So when I washed this, I was shocked at how clean this came came out and how white it is. Um, it's just beautiful. Now, I think there's still a little bit of lanolin left in this, but there's nothing wrong with spinning with lanolin left in it. Some people actually spin in the grease. That's what it's called. So um, I could just spin them like this. I don't have to worry about getting every little bit of lanolin out. And um, some people like it because it actually moisturizes your hands. Um, but yeah, so I think it's one of those uh, issues of the water probably wasn't hot enough to get all of the grease out. So yeah, that's the unwashed and this is the washed. Yeah, so it's so I think that's all I have to say about it. Um, you know, I look forward to playing with it and and spinning it and eventually making it into something. Of course, that's going to take a really long time to get to that point, and I still have to finish processing my um, my fin fleece from Vermont Sheep and Wool. So yeah, my husband mentioned wanting. My husband is a hunter, and he mentioned wanting uh, a vest, like a, a nice wool vest to wear, I guess, for hunting. Although I told him, I was like, you know, if I make you this, you're not just wearing it for hunting. I'm not going to spend hours and hours spinning and then knitting something that you're only going to wear, you know, a few times a year. That's, you know, that's, yeah, you're going to, if I'm going to make you something, you're going to have to really wear it. <laughs> oh, oops, I don't want to put that in there. 
Okay, so that's it for my acquisitions, and that's all, all the things that I got at Rhinebeck, and I think um, I'm going to end the Rhinebeck section of this video now. I might split this video up into different sections. I might have to film, like, the regular podcast stuff um, in a separate video, so... So yeah, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what I got and hearing about my, I don't know, Rhinebeck adventures. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I went to Rhinebeck today and I bought my second fleece. So this is the new fleece that I bought. This is Coriadale. And here is the uh, fin fleece that I bought at Vermont Sheep and Wool. So this is from Rhinebeck, New York Sheep and Wool, and this is from Vermont. And it's fun to kind of like look at the difference. So as you can see that the fin tapers to a point where the Coriadale stays blocky. And then the fin fleece that I have is um, naturally got these different colors. Here's a little bit of clean fleece. And then these are just two sections of um, different colors that naturally occur on the fin fleece that I bought. And the Coriadale is all this color right here. Here's the Coriadale section in the Fleece and Fiber source book.